Today, we're going to talk about Kick 2, which is a massively popular synth from Sonic Academy, which is uh, not exclusively, but primarily for making kick drums. I did a tutorial last year um, on how to make some kick drums in Serum, and um, a lot of people were asking for the same tutorial, but in Kick 2. So here we go. If you want to see more tutorials, I've got tons of exclusive stuff on my Patreon, which you can check out. I've left the link below. I've also got loads of sample packs, preset packs and templates from my Shoply account. Link is also below as well. So let's jump into it. I'm going to first look at how the, G the GUI and the usability of Kick2. And then later on, I'm going to show you guys how to make a modern kick drum. So let's dive into the synth. So the main two things with kick two. Um, I'm going to just solo the sub so you can only hear that. So this is the default preset here. Tempos to 170. This is the default preset. And um, it's kind of compromised of several different compartments. So you've got the pitch envelope, which is essentially pitches the sine wave that kind of creates the, 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 a kick drum uh, like so. So at the moment it's just on the default init patch. So you can see just from moving around the pitch, uh, you kind of get a feel for, for, for a, a kick drum already. Um, this is a hugely important part of the synth. Uh, next up is the amp here, which kind of creates the shape of the kick you want. So I've got scope up as well, just so we can visualize the kind of changes made here. Uh, if I shorten the kick drum, So another really important part of the, the kick drum there. Together, the two combined is how you kind of create, you know, carve the sound of a kick out. Uh, next up, we have the clicks, which is the essentially the attack sounds that, that add the, uh, the fundamental of the kick. So I solo these here. Uh, there's a whole host of really, really cool, um, cool ones here. I'm also going to just show you guys how you can drag and drop one in as well. So you've got loads of different clicks here. Some of them are softer, some of them are a little, little harder. There's also lots of different uh, categories as well. So for different genres, so you've got hard. third one in have a look at what else we've got here effects you can also drag your own ones in as well so I've got some top kicks here from my sample pack you drag and drop it in there and combined with the sub So for UK slash happy hardcore, really, um, you know, a top kick is kind of important because it gives you that kind of thud, that attack that you need to kind of punch through, at, you know, between 160 to 170 BPM plus, whichever you kind of want to tempo you want to produce at. Uh, next up, we've got the sub control here, which is how you control the sub, the sine wave, another important element of the kick. Add in harmonics here. Another important element here is the piano roll. If you click this, it'll snap it to the, the key of the track, which are uh, the key that you've got on the piano roll. So at the moment, we're in a C3. So give it a really kind of high... So I'm going to mute these again, just go back to the this kind of sub. 
and we're going to look at some of the other elements here. So you've got a few effects. Uh, on the default one, it opens up with uh, there is a uh, EQ get there is an EQ which is switched on. If I click on edit there, on the default patch, it kind of comes up with this notch. You can always turn that off. You can also add in any kind of separate things you want to add into the kit. here you can also control those here as well actually so it's really good for that um, and then you've got the view here so if I click off the EQ uh, you can hone in and look at the uh, individual clicks so we can adjust the clicks as same as you can the pitch here and the the amp the clicks are also very similar as well so kind of carve them out using these nodes here and under the clicks as well you can also shorten the length pitch it change the starting point and add a low or high pass filter and all of these kind of give you control over how you want the um different elements of the kit to sound to fit with the sub also is there is a distortion built in as well those kind of harder kicks we want to try making something a little a uh, little tougher and there's different types of distortion you've got wave clip tube and tape High pass and low pass. And then a dry wet mix as well. Also got a compressor as well, which I'm not mad on this personally. Um, I don't tend to compress my kicks anyway. I mean, I, um, and if I did, I think I'd probably look elsewhere, but this it's all the same. It's still a cool little feature. And then another really cool feature here, which I think is awesome, is the render feature. So once you've got the kick you, you, you're happy with, um, I'll just turn some of this off. So once you've got a kick you're happy with, you can click generate here and you can just drag and drop it in Ableton anyway, straight into your, um, straight into new channel as audio, uh, which means, you know. So I think that's a really, really good feature just uh, in terms of kind of ease of use. Also, you've got different views here. So if you want to click on, so if you'd like to view kind of the clicks and the sub, you can view these here like so. And that just gives you an overview into kind of like what's overlapping, what's clashing, etc. cetera. Um, and you can adjust everything accordingly, like so. I'll just unmute all of these. Various volume fades there as well, which I think is really handy. And finally, there's also a limiter built in as well, which uh, I always forget about. Most of the time when I'm producing kicks, I don't tend to kind of fiddle with the limiter or the compressor or even the distortion. I'm kind of just going straight for the sound design as well. Um, so once you've kind of learned these bits here, um, you can kind of dive in and, and have a look at the, the amp here is hugely important and you're able to zoom in just here and you can move the sub out the way of the click. If you wanted to like this by zooming in. So zooming in really helps um, to kind of check the phasing as well. I mean, if I go to the start here, you can see I can adjust the phase, kind of get them maybe a bit more in line with each other. Which I think is really
really, really important as well. Um, and then also there's the kick length, which is, again, important. So I'm going to snap it back to 100%. So you can extend the length or shorten the length of the kick here using this slider. And when you're in amp and pitch view as well, you can also, um, it'll also tell you the length of the kick. So this kick here is snapping out at 0.22 of a millisecond at the moment bring that down so usually around the kind of one eight mark is is kind of the length that you'd want for a track at 170 bpm so that's a really quick overview of the the look and feel of how kick 2 works next we're going to dive in and we're going to have a look at how to make a modern kick <laughs> 